almost every idol RPG out there. Raid Shadow Legends, Monster Legends, Idol Heroes, Tap Tap Heroes, y you get the point. I've always been addicted to playing idol games, even going back to the good old cookie clicker days. I mean, hell, I still play Clash of Clans. But needless to say, I want to find a way to create an enjoyable and free to play idol RPG game. One that encourages play and not pay to win. Over the last month, I've been working on my very first Unity game, Ember Idol. An idol RPG where the player starts off as a little fire character and their goal is to kill enemies, unlock spells, get gold, and defeat the mighty Fire Lord. The game seems incredibly basic because idol games at the heart are incredibly simple. You kill an enemy, you get gold, you upgrade your stats, and you rinse and repeat. But what makes an idol game fun? Because at first glance, this game looks boring as hell. You aren't controlling your character, it's hard to play with friends, and they aren't really inherently challenging. So what is it? Why do idol games work so well? Well, there are a few big things that make idol games incredibly fun to play. Progress. People like making progress. Whether that be with your job, your relationship, your side projects, video games, anything. People enjoy the feeling of progress, no matter how easy it is. There isn't any commitment. People naturally have a fear of missing out on things. This can be an issue when a game is highly demanding and the player doesn't have enough time to play, which causes the player to not have as much fun. And idle games are the perfect fix for that. You can pick it up for two minutes, upgrade your hero, and put it down. In the background, your character will do all the work for you. So the next day, next week, next month, when you come back, you will always be making progress. Strategy. Every idle game out there contains some sort of strategy. If I upgrade my character's attack all the way, will I get one shot every enemy? If I upgrade my crit chance, will it give me more DPS than if I would just upgrade my critical damage? All of these questions can matter in the long run, which makes the simple clicking game turn into a strategy game to see how far you can push your character with optimized play. Numbers go up. People like seeing the numbers go up. Before I go any farther, I want to introduce myself. My name is Dazzo or Jacob. I have been doing game dev for approximately one month now. I have been a software engineer for about three years. Uh, online, people know me for World of Warcraft videos, so if you go to my channel, you can probably see a lot of videos from, I want to say, four or five years ago. It's been a long time, but I've gone over to the side of game dev recently, and I've been having a, fun with, a ton of fun with it. So, yeah, other than that, that's all you really need about me for now, and uh, let's get on to what I have to show you. So, I spent some time watching some Unity tutorials on Udemy. I felt that I was ready to start getting the basics down for this project, but the very first thing that I did was create a very, very basic UI. I had no idea about Unity, to, uh, Unity UI toolkit at the time, so I just did it manually in the inspector, which, which was a mess. I mean, come on, look at that thing. Wow. After that train wreck, I decided that it would be a good idea to start learning how to properly design UI in Unity which ended up being incredibly easy to use considering my daily work involves front-end development, so it was a pretty seamless transition using Flexbox to style the components. After getting the basic UI finished, I wanted to start to spawn enemies and get the basics of combat worked on. I didn't really know the direction that I wanted to head in, but there were a few ideas that I had. The first idea that I had was doing something very similar to how AFK Arena does their chapters. They pretty much have this map here, then each area they have a chapter, so chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, etc. I want to do something very similar to this, so you kind of have like 50 levels in one chapter, and then you go to the next chapter. Um, but the more I thought about it, the more I didn't really enjoy that, because I kind of like the idea of like having insanely high numbers in games, um, which kind of led me to my next idea, which was stages. So what will happen is each stage will have 10 levels. And then on the very last level, you'll defeat a boss to proceed to the very next stage. This felt like the best solution at the time, and I'm pretty unsure if this is what I'll use going forward, but for right now it works. So, kind of explain this deeper in terms of like the, uh, I don't know, code I guess, is each level will have a property called stage experience. Each monster will also have an experience value. When the monster loads into the level, we will check to see what the stage experience for that level is. They will spawn a set of monsters derived from the stage experience. So let's say for example that level 1 has 500 stage experience. Monster 1 will have 300 experience value, and monster 2 will have 200 experience value. And then let's say monster 3 has 100 experience value. By this logic, if the stage experience is only 500, we're only going to spawn monster 1 and monster 2, 
because the way we're sorting it is we're sorting it from the highest experience value to the lowest experience value. By having the system, I would be able to increase the stage experience every single time the player passes a level. That way, dynamically, I can spawn the same set of monsters for the same level. And there is no randomness either. I think that there may be a better approach to this in the future, but at least as a baseline, I think this is a pretty good start. Also, one thing to consider too is, let's say for example, I get to level two and the stage experience is 600. Now, by that logic, I can also spawn monster one, monster two, and monster three, because after total, they all equal up to 600. After spending a few hours working on the enemy spawner, we have a very basic enemy spawning stage functionality, whatever you want to call it, working. As you can see, there are a shit ton of things wrong with this current scene. Projectiles are firing weird, there are really weird particle effects, enemies re run behind the character, character doesn't even take damage, there's a lot wrong with this. But I want to say something about everything that's going to be going on with this project and everything going on in the future. After working on a lot of personal projects, I found that creating a very basic wireframe for the functionality helps me not get overwhelmed. In the past, I would try to do all these crazy features right off the gate, and I would be like, okay, you know, I spent two weeks working on this one feature, but I have nothing to show for it. And then I would get burnt out because I didn't see any progress. I want to try something different this time around where I want to create very basic functionality. That way I can see, oh, cool, like I did this part here, I just need to do this one little thing here, or hey, I did this, and I can actually see the game coming together, rather than me just spending all my time working on one thing, and I can just go back in the future and enhance it. But, needless to say, that's kind of my goal for this going forward, is I don't want to get overwhelmed, so you're going to see a lot of basic functionality to start with, and as the weeks go on and the months go on in the uh, future, you're going to see me really start to enhance all of these things that I started at the very beginning. But yeah. Anyways, I added some logic for the enemies to drop some coins whenever they die, but I'm not really sure how to dictate the quantity of coins that drops, and I want, you, want to get your guys' opinions on this as well. Do, do I want to drop the quantity of coins based on the stage that they're currently on? So let's say they're on stage 10, do I drop, you know, 100 coins because they're on stage 10, and tw uh, 200 coins if they're on stage 20? Or do I want to drop it based on the character stat levels? So let's say, for example, the character has 100 in all their stats. So that means with the coins, whenever they be defeat a monster, the coin would be the coin drop would be like what, like let's say two hundred, and let's say they have you know two hundred uh, stat levels total, then the total would be for the coin drop like four hundred, right? I think that's probably a bad way about going at, going about doing it. Um, so I'm kind of leaning more towards like doing it based on the stage level, but uh, let me know what you guys think about that. After coming up with bad idea after bad idea. We're on to the next item on the agenda, which is creating the functionality for the player to upgrade their stats. Now, most idle games have four primary stats. We have attack, health, critical hit damage, and critical chance. I want to create more stats than obviously the basic four. Like one, for example, that I want to add is fire explosive chance. On impact, it will deal AOE damage to the surrounding enemies. That's just one of them, for example, as well. We also have attack speed. Albeit a very basic stat, it is one that I find crucial for a game like this. Now, one that I'm very curious to see what your guys' opinions on is health regen. This is one that I'm very tempted to add, and I'm pretty 50-50 on it. I don't see it being that impactful of a stat, and here's why. As the game goes on and the monsters get stronger, they'll start doing a lot of damage. And at a certain point, if you aren't able to kill the enemies before they get to you, then health regen is pretty damn irrelevant. But if your health is high enough, then it could be relevant. So, honestly, I'm not too sure if I want to end up adding it or not. I'm kind of like, well, the more stats, the better. But also, I don't want to have a irrelevant stat that's just kind of there, and it's just like, why would I ever upgrade that? Whew, okay, well, after trying to get my damn buttons to work from the Unity UI toolkit to my code, my C-sharp script, I was fucking finally able to get this basic functionality start working. If you guys are curious what the current code looks like for upgrading stats, here is how it works. Whenever you click on one of the upgrade buttons, it will call the method UpgradeX1, which takes in a skill enum and a button text. From there, I can go ahead and look at all the scriptable objects that I'm currently passing in, and then figure out which one that I can update via the parameter that I'm also passing in. We then call the can upgrade many times, and we pass the number of times that we're gonna upgrade. Because we're calling the UpgradeX1 method, we're only gonna do it once, and then from there, we can go ahead and call the, we can, from there we can go ahead and update the button text to what the upgrade cost is. Now, get upgrade cost is pretty much going to be looking at the multiplier that I currently have set on the scriptable objects, which I'll show you guys soon. 
Um, and so that'll pretty much do a calculation to tell me whatever the gold costs for the current upgrade. And then from there, we go ahead and send an event called complete upgrade to the UI and that makes the UI update everything. Now, I think this is pretty bad code, honestly, but this goes back to what I said earlier, where I just want to have working code. And then the future, when I get better at unity development, better at game development, I can go ahead and enhance it in the future. So after getting everything pushed to the UI to be updated, I want to kind of show you all what I was doing for the upgrade manager. I'm not entirely sure if this is the best solution, but what I did was I created an upgrade manager singleton class, which holds a list of scriptable objects for each of the stats. This allows me to manipulate the stat multiplier easily and keep everything more abstract going forward. I'm truly trying my best right now to keep everything separate so that the code stays clean. But if anyone has a better idea on how to handle these upgrades, let me know. But yeah, so as you can see there, we have the attack multiplier and we can also see the attack multiplier and then also the attack cost and the attack damage. But yeah, with that being said, this is pretty much the finished gameplay for this devlog. Here's everything that we got accomplished. We got enemies working, so enemies are able to die, they're able to spawn. We have gold storage, which gold pretty much is whenever the enemies die. Yay, we get gold. Awesome. We have upgrades working, so you're able to upgrade your attack. Not health or anything else, but attack works. Solid. We have combat working, so the player is able to fire projectiles to do damage to the enemies. Enemies die as well. We have projectiles. That's awesome. They spawn from the character. Pretty cool. We have UI. UI was a pain in the ass, but I'm really glad we're... We have something basic right now, which is good enough. <laughs> we have assets. Um, a lot of these assets were actually generated by Mid Journey and Scenario GG. Uh, I can definitely talk about those in future videos where it's gonna be more UI centric. Um, but yeah, so definitely just did a AI generated uh, assets for this one. But uh, yeah, obviously there's a ton of things I need to accomplish next, but I'm super excited to start doing this devlog series and seeing where this game will go. If you guys have any critics or ideas for this game, please don't hesitate to leave a comment or any Unity tips in general. I'm extremely new to game development, so any advice is great so that I can make this project clean, easy, and just better to work with in the future. Thank you all so much for watching this devlog series. I can't wait to see you all in the next one. And yeah, just thank you so much. Excited to talk to you all and see what you all think. See you guys.